Gamers, the YouTube uploads have been a little scarce here and there, but hopefully from now on they're gonna go back to uh, full power and you know daily uploads and all that. Uh, for the people that are or were asking about the uh, AI uh, tournament, I want to update you guys. I have to wait for the new patch to release to be able to finish the AI tournament, the semifinals and the finals, because the pop the test server is not available anymore and the previous games were done on the new patch so i can't do them on live because we're in the old patch there you go anyway so today's video we're gonna check the ladder win rates so uh, i made a video about this i think early jan if i'm not correct something like that and basically we got the win rates for like the first month month and a half um we took a look at uh, at those so now we're gonna do the same thing uh, except we're gonna look at the win rates from December 1st when the last patch was all the way to now and today is February 6th. We're gonna see if something changed. I don't actually remember the exact win rates for every league obviously but I'll just kind of give my opinion how the the win rates are developing and kind of what to I guess expect in the new patch and you know because the new patch will obviously change quite a few things. If you missed that one out, there's a video on it uh, with the, all, all the changes. A lot of landmarks are getting changed, so that should be a good one. And obviously a lot of things have changed. So anyway, let's get into it. So on any rank level, so this is all leagues combined. Rus not seeing a lot of playability compared to some of the other civs. There's 50,000 games. Almost the same amount as Delhi, which is kind of crazy because Delhi has always been by far the least played Civ and there was a time where Roos was uh, I don't think it was most played it was like second most played uh, and now it's it's about to catch up to Delhi and also Abbasid kind of down there as well interesting enough Malians don't have that many games played considering they have high win rate which is also maybe part of the reason why their win rate is higher because there is more or less players playing it and like give it a gonna go so players that are playing it are pretty decent with it anyway let's get through the leagues in the bronze league where about uh half of the twitch chat i'm joking guys i'm joking only like 40 percent of twitch chat is in uh we got english mongol ottoman and hre at the top and then rus abbasid delhi mali and china at the bottom not really surprising in my opinion uh, because these five sieves specifically are, I would say, a, a, a more complicated than these five are. Like, I'm gonna just put in French in there. Ottoman is mass unit spam. This is a tower rush. This is a unit spam. This a uh, unit spam with the burger palace and French is a unit spam sieve. These are more like macro oriented or you got a rush castle. You know, th th there's more to it than people in low leagues, you know. It, it makes sense so let's just say that and almost 9,000 games are uh, with English which is kind of kind of funny because that's a massive difference silver we do see more or less the same thing uh, Ottoman falls down a tiny bit Abbasid goes up but in general the same uh, five sieves are at the bottom the same five sieves are at the top in English again with crazy 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 amount of games and this comes to Partially because it's an easy sieve to play when you start playing. Partially because it's in the campaign. In the gold league, now this is the majority of the players. So this is where, I, I don't remember the exact number, but this is the majority of AOE4 players are in gold league. And then I think that second highest was platinum and then diamond and then like silver, bronze conquer. I think it goes like that. Funny thing is, in gold, English is in the red. Uh, so it's already starting to dip. The number of games does not. It has 92,000 games with English in Gold League. Um, and we do see that Delhi is showing up in here. And again, the, you know, four out of the five sieves initially are still in the top five, which is the unit spam sieves. But the win rates are much closer. So you don't have like, you know, 43% and then 46, 46, 47. You can see that the sim numbers um, win rates are very close except for Russo which I would say is a little bit down in the gutter uh, but 48.5 and 51.8 I think that's that's completely fine on both sides platinum we see Malian and Ottomans rising quite a bit um, and only because of them having 
uh, that much higher win rate than you know 50 percent 53.6 and 53.2 uh, we see that you have six sieves that are in the red uh, because of that but again the win rates i would say are not that bad except these top two that have 53.6 which probably over 52 percent i would say it's maybe a bit too too much uh, i would say anything from 48 to 52 percent is more than fine uh, again Rus slacking a bit china right there on the line and then these i i think are all fine now this is the juicy part does it change in diamond does it change in diamond it does for the worse in a way so let me tell you something this is this is kind of like a funny one and i think devs have a complicated job a difficult job so this is diamond and gold and platinum are almost following the exact same pattern right and that pattern is china's down abbasid's down english is down right French, HRE, Delhi are around the middle. And Mongol here has a pretty high win rate, but in the other ones, it's around 50%. And then these two are at the top. Now, why do I say this is a, a problem to have as a developer? Malian right now is considered one of the worst sieves at the top level. Malian was considered super, super strong. And in one of my uh, tier list videos, which I will be making for the new patch as well. I said that Malian for Rainbow Rush is incredibly strong. Their other stuff is not really strong, but the moment people learn how to deal with it, it will fall off. And that is happening at the pro level for a few weeks now, where the Farimba just, it, it seems hard to win with Malians, in my opinion. Uh, because the top players will learn how to deal with it, and even uh, HRE that Malins is supposed to counter, I am not sure if it counters it anymore, if HRE plays correctly. Now, what is the issue with the Malian win rate then? Like, why, is, why is it so high? Well, two reasons. It's because people have not caught up with it, and I think, you know, maybe they don't know how to deal with it yet. Farimba is pretty straightforward for the Malian player, so it's not like Malians need to evolve Farimba. Farimba is just Farimba, you just make it and go. Uh, but another reason is, and I think this is a bigger problem, and I talked about this before, Malians are incredibly easy to play, and uh, this is where the problem comes from. I don't think that Farimba is too strong. I, if anything, I think Malians are really weak. The problem is, uh, you know, you need like 20% of your skill to execute Farimba correctly and play Malian, but you need like 80% of your skill or 100% of your skill to actually counter it. Now this is where uh, a lot of people mistake balance for this kind of thing where it's more a difficulty of the Civ. And I even said this for English, uh, French and Mongol a long time ago. I never thought that English and French were OP um, in lower leagues. I just thought their stuff was a lot more difficult to deal with uh, than to actually play it. So I think now this is happening with Malians, but in more extreme case, I would say, because uh, macroing with Malians is incredibly easy, but countering it is a lot harder. And if you fall behind Malians, it's very hard to, it's very hard to recover, right? It's a very one dimensional play and it's still hard to play against. I know people are going to ask me, so, uh, you know, I'll just say a general idea behind beating Malians is just uh, overwhelming them with units. And the only sieves that actually do really well against Malians are sieves that can mass a uh, crazy amount of units. And those sieves are Delhi is pretty good against Malians. Uh, Ottomans are very good against Malians. Uh, Mongols are not because Mongols do not work as a sieve of massing and outmassing your opponent. Um, Rus French are not too great against Malians because they usually rely on heavy units to deal damage, but it is possible to win with both of them just by making Horseman Archer. That is the comp you want to go for against Malian. Now, HR is an interesting one because their strongest units are all armored units, but if you manage to get your economy going and go Archer Horseman, you can beat Malians even with HRE. And initially, I did say that Malians seemed like a hard counter to HRE, but 
you know, you got to do something that no HRE player ever does, which is make archers. So I think that's something a lot of people struggle with. A lot of people don't do it. And a lot of people, I mean, as you can see, they have terrible win rates. Same thing with English. Same thing with any Civ. Abbasid, I think, is pretty decent against Malians. And China, uh, probably one of the better counters versus Malians because they also have Nesta Bs. So, yeah, in general, counters to Malians are just macroing really, really well and then kind of overwhelming them. Uh, and trying to outmass them because uh, javelin throwers if you have like 10 of them versus 10 15 archers they're kind of op but when you get to the number of like 40 50 archers the javelin throwers lose their power quite a bit um and they're much easier to deal with uh with horsemen because you know if you have 10 javelin throwers against two horsemen you can actually kite them and kill horsemen but if 30 horsemen arrive against 30 javelin throwers or 40 then the horsemen are going to win that one, you know, not even close. Ottoman. I mean, Ottoman is, uh, I, I'm assuming people are just using the archer spam build. I haven't seen too many builds where the people go to DC. I've seen a lot of like Ottomans rushing castle and then making like knights out of imperial schools or military schools. I keep calling them imperial schools. Uh, or just people doing military schools in feudal and all inning. Again, it's pretty straightforward. It reminds me a little bit of old English, uh, where you kind of make your production and you just kind of go for it, right? And I think the rise in Delhi might be due to people maybe being more excited about playing Delhi in the new patch. So maybe people have started like playing it more and more. Who knows? And then, the last but not least, let's check Conquer and above. But I do want to say that uh, in the last video where I was looking at the win rates, if you guys remember, I also had uh, information from AOA4 World that they linked uh, in one of the discords and we had win rates in Conquer and above, then we had win rates in Conquer 3 and above, and then we had like con uh, win rates in like 1.8 and 1.9k and above, and all those look differently. So, let's look at Conquer, and again, I just want to say this is a big... Uh, wide span of skill ranks. Um, I know a lot of people think Conquer is Conquer, no matter what. If it's Conquer 1 and 3, it's similar. It, it's not. Uh, Conquer 1 to Conquer 3 is two different worlds, in my opinion. And Conquer 3 and Pro Play is two different worlds as well. So, let's see. Um, Mongol is at the top. Uh, I'm not too surprised about that. Um, because the Mongol trading is something that a lot of Conqueror players have been doing and I do think that still people don't really know how to deal with it and if Mongol trade gets out of hand you're just kind of screwed. Also Mongol tower rushing is still pretty decent. The Malian thing, like I said, uh, at the top top level people have started dealing with Malians and honestly I haven't seen too many people practice Malians in custom games in preparation for Golden League. Uh, which is kind of funny because at the Red Bull, no one played Malians. Then right after Red Bull, uh, Farimba came out and everyone's like, holy shit, this is OP. And now we have another tournament and Farimba is like, eh. So I don't think we'll be seeing much Mongo uh, in Golden League either. I might be wrong. I hope I'm wrong because I, I do think it's a cool sim, but we'll see. Uh, Ottoman is 52%. I think Ottoman is just like a... It, it's a safe save, you know. You you can be aggressive, you can go late game, you have decent castle. I, I feel like it doesn't really have any weaknesses, like glaring weaknesses where it's like, oh, it's really bad, you know, at this phase. It's all around good. Uh, Rus is kind of interesting and I want to check it out. Um, the reason why I say Rus is kind of interesting because I wonder what maps the Rus is played on. Because, if you guys remember, I uh, the last time we did this, or maybe not the last, maybe the time before, was when Rus had like 57% win rate or something, and everyone was like, Whoa, I thought Rus was bad. And I said, hey, hey, hold up, wait a minute. And then I opened the thing, remember that? And most of the Rus games were on hideout, which was completely broken for Rus. And that was like 80% of the games were on hideout, which is the reason why Rus had 57% win rate. So what I am suspecting is most games with Rus will be on King of the Hill, 
maybe Mediterranean? What what else is on the ladder? King of the Hill and Mediterranean. I would say it's probably the most maps, and that's not even um I mean we took a little peek. Okay, it has some on wetlands too. It has some on pit. Uh which I'm actually surprised that it doesn't have more games on Mediterranean. Um but if you look Let's go through the, through the maps, right? 60% win rate on King of the Hill. And that is uh, that is bumping up their win rate quite a bit. Mediterranean, 57%. Uh, Wetlands, interesting stats, positive win rate. The Pit, uh, also it's a decent map for Rus. And then this is where the fall off happens. So these are kind of like unique, very specific w uh, maps. Maybe Pit is like the more standard map, I would say. Um, but Wetlands, Mediterranean, and King of the Hill are very unique and they're v like very good for specific sieves. And then if you go down to like more normal maps like Lipani, uh, Dry Arabia, I mean Mongolian Heights is also like a unique map I guess. Uh, I don't know why these two maps are even in. And then you got French Pass and Prairie. Prairie is just awful for Rus, right? So. I think that if you even excluded these two, their win rates would plummet, right? But because of the, you know, Conquer players are more, uh, as I like to call it, min-maxing, right? They're picking uh, good saves where they're good on because they want to get higher in ranks. They want to practice the good saves and good maps. Rus is getting, I think, picked on more correct maps. And you have 51% win rate, which... You know, if you're looking at this from the outside, you're like, oh, I don't know much about Area 4, let me check the winners. You're like, oh, Rus is fourth best, I'm gonna play that. It's like, well, it's a little deceiving, right? It's a little deceiving. Um, China at 49.8%. Uh, I think in the last one, when we looked at China, China had awful win rate. Twitch chart can correct me if I'm wrong, but I think China had like 44% or something like that, together with English, I think it was. And uh, Twitch chat was like, well, if China and English are top civs, why are they so bad in Conquer? And to be honest, I was very confused with uh, China specifically. English is right now at 47, which is a bit under the, the, the balance um, of 48 to 52 number that I said earlier. But I do think that English is... Uh, English and French are both funny sieves in a in a in a very unique way. They're both the easiest sieves, but also they're uh, probably two of the hardest sieves at the same time. So English and French are incredibly easy to start out with, incredibly easy to play, incredibly easy to make units and attack. And the reason why I say they're you know easiest and hardest is because at the top level that doesn't work. Um, and even below the top level, as you can see, that doesn't really work. People are used to making units, people are used to scouting, reacting, and people are, you know, learn how to deal with French knights. So that kind of like, just make units and attack style, I gotta, it doesn't work. Uh, so you have to kind of like, micro really well, you gotta force your opponent to make mistakes to even have a chance, and it kind of like, starts off great you know at the at the start uh, in, in like bronze uh, silver gold league it starts off real good and then it kind of slowly dips in it gets to conquer and it goes like this english and french and then if the players are really good with them they actually uh peak even higher than even in the lower leagues of what they have because i actually think that french is one of the weaker sieves but uh french in the hands of some of the top players, um, you know, like Marine Lord, Vortex, Lucifron. Uh, I played Linux recently. He played French. He played it really good. And I was like, man, maybe, you know, maybe French is good. But I think those players are just incredibly good with French. Uh, and that's kind of the reason why they're doing so well with it. And I would say partially English is kind of the same. Uh, English has like a slow moving army and you can't really make any mistakes because if you do you overextend and you lose your whole army very very quickly like you don't have an option of just running away because you're all you know longbow spearman man at arm kind of stuff but I do think still that English is one of the best civs uh, at the competitive level together with China and you know China did get its win rate up 
Um, and again, I don't understand why China dipped. I understand why English dipped last time because I talked about this. There's a difference between Conquer 1 English and, and you know, Conquer 3 or top level English. But China is, uh, I feel like a lot of people have learned how to play it. So I was very confused when it was really, really down in the win rates last time. Uh, Abbasid and Delhi, you know, uh, I think Abbasid is pretty decent. Uh, I think both of their win rates, I don't remember what they were last time. I think Delhi was uh, at like the 1.8, 1.9k was really low. It was like 40%, 43%, something like that. But I think people are playing these two saves more and more in preparation for a new patch because they're both getting a lot of changes. I think people are probably playing, even though Rus has uh, lowest amount of games in Conquer. Uh, I also think that people are slowly maybe playing more Rus uh, because they want to practice it, but you can see daily amount of games. This is probably one of the first time that it's not the lowest played Civ. Um, so that's going to be interesting to see. Atri at 48.1%. I think Atri is a Civ that doesn't fit everyone. Some people play it really well, some people don't. And I think uh, probably a lot of the games are from Mediterranean and a lot of the percentage win rate for a tree is, is from Mediterranean uh, and Prairie, uh, of course. Uh, okay, 356 games. So it's the third, fourth actually most played. Uh, I think in general, there's not a, a lot of Mediterranean games, by the way. So even though this is uh, a tree's fourth most played map, I think a lot of players straight up veto Mediterranean because it's a pure water map, so people don't want to deal with it. But you can see on Prairie, uh, burger rushing with a lot of sheep is very common. And then I think it goes down on uh, maps that are more standard because I think you have to play HRE really well on open maps in order to win because you kind of need time to, you know, bloom up a little bit. So, overall... Um, I think, I honestly think, uh, I like looking at these win rates, by the way, with you guys, because it, it's, I think it's good to look at stats and what the stats are saying, but I don't think, like, I don't look at this and I'm like, man, I should practice more Malians, or man, I should play more Rus, or, oh, I guess it's time to quit English, right? There's always a, you know, kind of silver lining for these things, and you always gotta, in my opinion, draw your own conclusion. Like, if you're looking at the gold, uh, it doesn't mean that China is unplayable or that Malian wins every game. These are, if you think about it, out of 100 games, Malian wins 52 and loses 48. Like, that's not, <laughs> you know, you're not losing games because that's just, just incredible imbalance, right? So, um... I think that the next patch will change a lot, which by the way, we don't have a release date, uh, but it, I'm assuming it's coming a day or two before season two. And I think season two is coming out on 16th of February from what the in-game says. Uh, so the season ends on 16th, which I'm assuming the season starts on 17th, which is what happened last time, last season. Uh, if that's the case, if the season starts on 17th, I would imagine the patch would be on 15th or 16th of February. And again, I got no info for this. Assume it. Or the next season, and if they release next season, they gotta release a new patch. With the new patch, now, I'm not gonna go too detailed into this, but my predictions for new patch is... Um, I think English will overall do a bit better, but people won't be as scared to go against English in the late game because they did receive a big nerf in the late game. Um, I do think that French will more or less stay the same. I don't think that the changes that the French has will be like mind-blowing and everyone's going to start playing French or something like that. They do have some changes in the late game. They do have the trade uh, landmark changed. Some people will experience with it, but... Uh, or experiment, sorry, with it. But I don't think it's going to change too, too much. Uh, I think HRE will more or less remain the same. Some people will be doing mine work. Delhi will change a lot. Uh, Delhi did get a nerf in Feudal in terms of healing, but they got massive buffs for Castle specifically and Imperial. And I would be su surprised, I might be wrong, but I would be surprised if the Delhi... For the first time in a while, doesn't go above 50% win rate in almost every league. 
because I think elephants are also going to be the type of units that are kind of difficult to deal with if you don't know what you're doing. Abbasid will go up for sure. Abbasid is getting so many more options and I do think Abbasid is just straight up getting a buff. China, it's going to remain the same. It's going to be a good sieve. Uh, Rus will definitely go up. Uh, now to what extent that I don't know because Kremlin is getting a change that might be really good unless it's getting further changes but in my opinion Rus is getting buffed so it can't be worse right right uh, then we got Ottoman and Malian that are unchanged so with all the buffs to the other civs I would expect them maybe to dip a little bit and then Mongol got the change in the Imperial landmark so I don't expect Mongol to drop in win rates, but I also don't expect them to rise up. So I think the biggest changes will be Delhi, Abbasid, probably English, and potentially Rus. And then the saves that are staying for sure where they are or going down uh, are going to be Malian, Ottoman, China, and maybe H3 actually goes down because more people are going to try mine work. Who knows? Uh, but those are my predictions. We'll see what happens. At the end of the day, I think, uh, you know, you never know. Uh, I'm basing this off, by the way, on the uh, changes we have announced. Uh, but there's always a potential for us to have further changes, right? To, you know, some of the things to still be changed or tweaked or whatever. And obviously, I don't have info on that. So we will see. Anyway, if you're watching this on YouTube, thank you guys so much for watching. Check me out on Twitch. I am probably live right now, like I am live right now. And uh, I will catch you guys tomorrow with another video for you guys watching on Twitch. Let's keep 